In the last unit we looked at detail components and how they're used to add construction details to the views of our 3D model. So here is a typical section, so there's a window head there and then a section through a cavity wall. So we saw how if we went to the annotate menu and the detail panel, we've got detail components and let's say we want to start showing the courses on our external wall. So there is a detail component for a brick in section. We can place that in there. We can snap there and we could start copying that and building that up. Remember that little trick if you don't have any objects selected of swapping the display model parameter to half tone to actually see where we're, we're putting our detail components. So copy, multiple, and we can actually start building up our section. Now that would actually be quite laborious to put all our separate uh, bricks in in section. And that is where repeating details comes in. So anywhere where you've got a detail which repeats in a consistent pattern, and this is a really good example of bricks and blocks in section. That's where repeating details come in. So I'm just going to get rid of those three separate detail components we've put in. So annotate menu, component. Now hit the little drop down and switch to repeating detail component. Now if we start with the block work here, again your type selector will show you all the different repeating details types that you've got loaded in based on the template that this project was based on. So I'm going to work with that first one there, block work at 100 mil thick. Click a start point. Zoom and make sure I get the snap to the corner. And now simply as I move my cursor up the screen, you can see it's adding in, it's repeating that detail automatically. And just click anywhere to stop and place. And there is our block work done. Swap out to brickwork in section. Zoom in, just make sure I snap to the corner and zoom out a little bit. Move my cursor up the screen and click to place. Modify to cancel. So very quickly we've put our brickwork and our block work in, in section just with a single click to start and a single click to end on each of the two leaves. So we've just seen examples of repeating details with brick and block sections. Let's just have a, a quick look at some other examples to give you a flavour of what's available and when they typically be used. So remember annotate, repeating detail component. So we've already seen brickwork and block work. Let's just take some of these at random. Metal stud work. So you can imagine um, setting up your predefined centers and putting those metal studs in automatically. Let's see what else is in here. Purlins across roofs, either inclined or flat. We've also got standing seams. I'll show you very shortly how you can create your own repeating details and you can set the centers. Uh, let's take a couple more roof tiles. You can see as I stretch it just keeps adding more and more components. So again, you would generally be using these with an underlying view of the 3D model. So you'd have, you'd have built up your, your Revit roof and you'd have a zone obviously for the tiling. And on top of that then you would apply your repeating detail to actually show the individual tiles. And finally, just have a look at suspended ceilings. Okay, click in there. Again, you can see it's placing down the ceiling tiles with the hangers. So we looked at the 3D ceiling component uh, before in a unit. So that would give us the general zone. So when we cut through or took a section through a model, we'd see the ceiling element with the zone here. And it's at that point we could use this repeating detail over the top 
to actually show the tiles if we wanted to with a bit more detail with the hangers included. So what if you want to create your own repeating details? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now repeating details basically consists of two components. One, the actual detail component that is to be repeated, and that is the same type of detail component that we looked at in the previous unit. So I go to annotate and component. You remember detail component. Basically repeating detail component is based on one of those and the other if you like part of it is the set of rules which determine how it is repeated so if we just take this one to start with timber stud work horizontal we'll use that as the basis now it is a system family so I need to edit type I need to duplicate let's give it a name so I'm simply going to call it repeating detail so we've set up a new repeating detail which is a system family and as such it points at a component family now the component family is the actual detail itself remember that's a standalone individual loadable family that we can edit in the family creator we looked at that briefly in the last unit so at the moment it's pointing towards this particular family, this, this stud work here. We'll leave it on that just for now. So here is the, the set of rules which determine how that particular individual component is repeated when you actually use the tool, when you move your cursor along as we saw before. These are the rules which determine how that works. And we'll run through how this all operates now. So let's have a look at the options there. So the layout, how is this particular detail going to be uh, spread out along your view when you move your cursor? And here is the options. Fill the available space, a fixed distance, a fixed number or maximum space. Let's run through each of those. The standard is a fixed distance. So that detail is going to be repeated at a set centers and those centers are going to be determined by this parameter the spacing let's leave that at 450 this detail rotation is do you want the actual detail that you specified here to be rotated from its normal position as it lays it out and I'll go and swap a few of these around once we start to play with it so you can see the effect so let's okay that and let's run with this here so there is the individual detail component being repeated at the fixed distance that we specified. So let's go in and edit the type. If we can change the spacing, so let's drop that down to 250. Hit apply. So obviously the centers have come closer together. Let's go back and edit type. Detail rotation, it's being rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise at the moment. Just put that to none, hit OK, and you can see the detail all faces the same way forward. Let's go back here. Now let's have a look at this layout parameter and see what this does. So fill available space. Basically that takes out any spacing between it and it repeats each detail straight after the last one. So you haven't got to worry about spacing, so um, you can see there, no matter how far you stretch your cursor, it just keeps repeating them one after the other and lays them down in a uniform fashion. So let's go back to edit type. We've looked at fixed distance, fixed number. The spacing now gets grayed out. You don't get to specify the uh, distance or the centers between them. But what you can do is actually specify the number here. So let's go and stretch that out. Change the number, let's say, drop it down to four. And it will just put four details in equally spaced from the distance you drag the cursor to. Let's go back to edit type and we'll have a look at maximum spacing now here you do get to put a spacing back in 
and with this one rather than that spacing or those centers being always consistent they do vary up to the maximum that you've set so no matter how far you drag this out Revit will always try to equally space them and it will add it'll get to that sort of threshold of the maximum spacing then add another one in so if you need a set number of units to be equally spaced but no more than the maximum center then that's the option to choose so you can see it's really quite easy to set up these repeating details so first of all you need a detail component to work with either one of the ones that come with Revit and we looked at that uh, index sheet you can get off the internet the PDF to show you all the ones available or create your own detail component using the family editor once you've got a detail component to work with then you go to repeating detail component you create a new type give it a name aim it at your detail component so you might need to load that one into the project first aim it in here so it's pointing at the right detail then choose how you'd like that component repeated and we looked at the, num the, the different options available there the spacing parameter there we missed that before just just mention that that little tick box that controls whether the start point is from the beginning of the detail so the detail is inside the distance or if you untick it it, the, the, the start point is taken from the center of the detail itself so for example joists you'd probably not have the inside ticked on you'd actually want to specify from the center to the center of the last one so it really just depends on the type of detail you're creating and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material please take the complete course online at bimscape.com here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.